Last decade, the major vectors of power in tech were cloud, mobile, social, and big data. Network computing architectures were heavily influenced by the mobile leg of that stool with bring your own devices and the sassification of the enterprise. The next 10 years are going to see a focus on instrumenting the edge and leveraging architectures that provide a range of capabilities from very small embedded devices to much larger systems that span hybrid IT installations, they move data across clouds and then to the very far edge. And as so often the case, consumerized IoT technology is rapidly driving innovations for enterprise IoT. What are the key trends, challenges, and opportunities that this sea change brings? And how should we think about the expanding networked universe? And what will it take to thrive in this new environment? Hello everyone, this is Dave Vellante. And welcome back to HPE Discover 2021. You're watching theCUBE's virtual coverage of HPE's annual customer event. And with me to discuss the next decade of IoT innovation and enablement is David Logan, who's the Vice President and CTO for the Americas for HPE's Aruba Networks. David, welcome to theCUBE, come on in. Thanks so much. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here today with you. <clears throat> so if the last decade was all about mobile, and that was legit. It was really driven by the iPhone and Android adoption. And we've been hearing about IoT for a long time. Uh, what's the impetus behind the current focus on IoT? Is it connected cars, connected homes? What's making it real this time from your point of view? You know, it's, uh, it's really almost everything at once. Uh, if you look at how um, IoT systems had been developed over the past 10 years, it was super industry specific. A lot of, a lot of uh, niche implementations, um, a lot of product vendors trying to become an IoT platform play, but with all of that innovation that's taken place, it's been additive over that past 10 years. Now the next 10 years, we're really looking at um, a, a phenomenal amount of growth, a phenomenal amount of uh, increased innovation to bring IoT solutions to almost any industry for any purpose uh, whether it's a horizontal need or a, or a vertical need. So you guys use terms like solutions enablement, IOT solutions. It's a real big focus of, of HPE's edge to cloud narrative. I wonder if you could add a little color and some details behind that and explain how Aruba fits in. I'll, I'll be glad to. So um, HPE's edge to cloud strategy is, is a really accurate term. Ultimately the edge is where IOT solutions are first enabled and it's where data is born. It is where end user experiences live. And Aruba's role in edge to cloud architectures is to provide the connectivity, the performance assurance, the ability to commingle what were once parallel architectures into common infrastructure, common operating platforms, and allow this data that's born at the edge to go all the way to the hybrid cloud infrastructure wherever it needs to go, whether it's an IoT end user application, whether it's an IoT subsystem for industry or, or for a vertical industry uh, or for a vertical enterprise, um, the Aruba infrastructure really provides this common operating platform at the edge so that the rest of the enterprise can benefit from what's, uh, what's transpiring. When you think about the sort of candidates for IOT at the enterprise level. I mean, it's the edge obviously is very fragmented. And, and of course the big industrial giants, they're on a path, they're digitizing, they're collecting data, they're driving new monetization initiatives. And you know, they got the budgets to do that. Can, can smaller companies come to this party? Absolutely. And it's really the consumerization uh, of IOT that's really driving that. Uh, as you mentioned uh, in some of your opening statements, um, the consumerization of computing with mobile computing architectures, SaaS, cloudification of applications, and, and the extension of the enterprise application environment to the end user with their consumer devices as opposed to their enterprise issued devices. Um, we're seeing the same effects in IoT now. The consumerization of IoT, the release of the Amazon Echo in 2014, uh, all of the smart TV technology, all of the in-home uh, home automation technology that's been developed for individual use cases, for conglomerated use cases. It is this innovation that is now being able to be brought into the enterprise, either in the form of pure consumer technology, just take a look inside your average student dorm room, how much digital technology they brought in, but it's in, a, it's in an enterprise setting in the university. 
Uh, think about uh, hospitals, healthcare, that have brought in uh, technology to facilitate their particular processes. The consumerization will allow digital experiences to be delivered to the patient in their, uh, in their, uh, in their treatment suite, for example. Uh, so we're gonna see this really drive over the next 10 years uh, quite, quite, um, uh, quite a significant amount of interesting new use cases. You know, just a quick aside, David, I mean, that echo example is kind of interesting because when you think about the predominant use cases for AI at the enterprise, it's, it's largely modeling that's taking place in the cloud. But when you think about the predominance of AI on whether it's smartphones or you mentioned things like Echo, it's, that's kind of AI inferencing at the edge, facial recognition is another good example. That's bleeding into the enterprise. And it's, as, as, you, as we, you know, we talked about up top, it sort of points the way and informs the, the enterprise, much like the consumerization of IT. Absolutely. Um, you know, organizations like Microsoft, Google, Amazon, they're really leading the charge from, a, from a, both a consumerization perspective, but also a developer enablement perspective, bringing the ability for AI, machine learning, uh, very specific capabilities, like you mentioned, video recognition, to be able to be brought into enterprise application environments by a developer so that they don't necessarily need to know how to develop that full AI ML stack, but can incorporate that capability into their end user applications. And then it's, it's going to lead to um, brand new productivity innovations that, it, it, that an enterprise can benefit from. Uh, it's going to lead to certainly new business models. It's going to lead to the ability to, to integrate um, federated systems together, whether it's a, um, a business model between two enterprises or whether it's uh, the, you know, how a particular enterprise operates their own business. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be really fascinating. I was reading about hand recognition, you know, for security, you go beyond fingerprint recognition, <laughs> it should now be hacked. Let's talk about the market. Everybody talks about the TAM, you know, pick your trillion, one billion, one trillion, two trillion. I mean, it's a huge total available market, as I said, very fragmented. So how do you think about segmenting the market? What, how should we think about the different categories of, of IOT and, and solutions and architectures? Well, you know, every, um, every organization is easily categorized by their industry, healthcare, higher education, industrial, retail, they all have their particular operating models that generally speaking have a lot of similarities. And so um, when we think about market and market segmentation, it, I think it's first important to think about the particular vertical that, a, that an enterprise organization belongs to. And then, you know, in innovators like, uh, like us here at Aruba, we think about how do these particular industries need solutions? And then we look across them for horizontal opportunities. For example, within Aruba's solution set, the ability to uh, go through rapid IoT device onboarding and security policy process and procedures, that's pretty universally applicable across many different industries. But at the same time, when you look, when you look inside uh, a particular vertical like uh, a, a heavily industrialized setting, they want to collapse their OT infrastructure and their IOT and IT infrastructures all together. And they're going to need some very specific solutions to do that. Um, whether it's the ability to guarantee data flow from the edge to the cloud, whether it's security, performance assurance, whatever their needs are, they're going to be very unique to them too. And so looking at it by vertical first is important. And then I, I think sending by size makes sense. And then as we were talking about earlier, the consumerization of IoT systems is really going to bring the ability for medium and smaller organizations to uh, benefit from a lot of these innovations. Another, another aside, maybe it's not a quick aside, but you got the OT and the IT, you got OT engineers that are pretty hardcore about you yeah. know, the, the way they do things. And you got IT folks, they have you know, security edicts and compliance and so forth. Uh, kind of how, how are they working together? Like who's driving the, the, the bus and in, in that, in that well, convergence? You know, every organization has their own operating culture. They have their, their uh, prior way of doing things and then they have the future. And the real key here for leadership, honestly, the real key here for organizational leadership, uh, solution technology leadership in these organizations is to figure out how to bring everybody together. The OT 
uh, responsible part of the organization. The folks that are in the line of business, the folks who are in biomedical engineering in a healthcare organization, they know what the end application is. They know what the systems behaviors are going to be from an end user's perspective or from a, from a technology's perspective uh, as it's applied at the edge. The IT team knows how to build and operate and maintain a robust structure that is all commingled together, that is all integrated together. They're going to have to work together so that they understand the end user applications, the experiences that need to be delivered, the systems architecture, and then how it needs to be operated. But the reason they need to come together is it needs to be using a common enterprise architecture to do so. Common network infrastructure, common computing, storage, data platforms, at least from a standards perspective, so that the enterprise can get operational efficiency. And so they can really have the one plus one equals three value proposition moments when multiple systems come together. So you, there are a couple of things we just hit there, the organizational challenges, the architectural challenges, you don't want to have more stovepipes. Everybody talks about stovepipes and <clears throat> data silos. Are there any other challenges that you'd note that an organization faces in, in planning and implementing an IoT solutions architecture from your perspective? Are they organizational? We talked about that. We talked about some technical, any others that we might have missed? You know, um, it, it's interesting. When you look inside an enterprise that has some decent best practices or some good best practices for implementing their, uh, their enterprise IoT frameworks. Um, as I mentioned, bringing the organization together uh, from the end user perspective and the experiences that they need from the operational perspective and the operational technology bleeding into or merging into IT technology, clearly there's, there's that organizational component, but that then needs to map into a newly refined enterprise architecture you know, last decade, you know, the 90s, the 2000s, 2010s, we talked about enterprise architecture a lot. It was a lot about client server and it was a lot about migrating from legacy application architectures into next gen and web 2.0. And now it's all about um, machine to machine and mobile and post mobile. And that means that the enterprise architecture that maybe got dusty on the shelf needs to be pulled off and re-implemented. And interestingly, um, as a networking vendor, what we've seen as a best practice is these enterprise organizations recognize that with cloud and mobile and IoT and vendors playing such, a, such an important role that um, a lot of control and a lot of visibility has been pulled away from the classic enterprise IT organization. And now looking at the network as the place where experiences come to, uh, at, at the places where uh, as to where um, instrumentation of the overall end-to-end -end architecture can come together. And so they're really now starting to look at the network as, as um, a, a far more important component than perhaps they did four or five years ago, where it might have just been, you know, four bars of Wi-Fi or, you know, connectivity from branch to headquarters. When I think about <clears throat> enterprise architectures, I definitely, you know, I go to workloads and I go, okay, what, how is work how is work that's being done in the enterprise changing? And you obviously have a lot of general purpose ERP and financials and, 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 and CRM and H, HCM, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> you've got this emerging set of workloads that's data intensive, whether it's AI or you know, whatever, whatever you call it. Some people call it matrix workloads, but all the kind of new, interesting, you know, data intensive workloads. And then there's a ton of work being done that's just not even supporting applications directly. It's, it's making, storage run better or networks run better. And so it's kind of wasted cycles, if you will. So I, I talked to a lot of people who are kind of rethinking th that architecture to your point, based upon the type of work that's being done. And obviously things like inferencing at the edge that we talked about a little bit earlier uh, are going to drive that in the enterprise. And that's really going to put new requirements on the architectures, is it not? Uh, absolutely. In fact, this is, uh, this is core to the HPE edge to cloud uh, strategy and architecture. Ultimately, um, every organization is going to be different. They're going to have different uh, use cases, uh, different different business requirements. But um, we are going to find over the next ten years that a significant amount of the data that is born at the edge and the experiences that are delivered at the edge need a local presence of compute and communications to enable. Um, 
what needs to what needs to take place locally from an operations perspective. L let me give you a, a concrete example. I've mentioned healthcare a couple of times. Imagine a healthcare environment uh, of a large healthcare network organization, and they need to consume patient telemetry information from all of their their patient bedside monitoring systems at the point of pa uh, at the point of patient care. Well, what if the point of patient care is in a hospital tower? What if the point of patient care is in the uh, the patient's home? That, that's an, a, a completely different set of circumstances physically and logically from an enterprise architecture perspective. And so it's particularly important to think through how data will be born at the edge, consumed locally, processed locally, and then forwarded to hybrid cloud um, computing environments for continued processing after the fact. So you might need to react immediately to some patient telemetry that's collected locally, but then also collect that information, process it into metadata, store it somewhere else, maybe uh, maybe have it diverge into multiple streams. And in all of this, the computing architecture at the edge, the hybrid cloud architecture, the network architecture from edge to cloud all matters because this involves security, it involves availability, it involves uh, performance, it involves how the data itself is used, the experience of the end users that are responsible for the delivery of the, of the, um, the experience itself. So um, the, the ultimate enterprise architecture here is going to evolve yet again. And just as we've seen over 30 years, the, you know, the centralization, the decentralization, the centralization, the distribution of various functions, we're just, we're just seeing that again because we continue to reinvent how we operate with better and better um, architectural models. Right, and the pendulum's definitely swinging. When, you th when I think about the compute at the local level, I think it's got to be super high, super high performance and dirt cheap and low power. Um, and, and I want to ask you a question about something you said earlier about your strategy uh, is really to look for those horizontal opportunities. So, so am I right to infer, you're not going after the, the, the deep edge with you know, specialized uh, capabilities, or are you? I think Tesla, right? I mean, you know, d designing their own chips for their cars. <laughs> you're not going there, I presume, but you also reference, hey, there's going to be some data that's coming back. That's kind of your role, but maybe you can help clarify that for me. Yeah, so, so interesting, we are in a way going after those special ed edge cases, but that's through the creation of an architecture that is malleable enough where you can define an enterprise network architecture, an enterprise network experience that um, will address the horizontal, easy to understand use cases like mobile devices that need Wi-Fi connectivity or mobile devices that need Bluetooth connectivity or Zigbee or what have you, but also we have found that through, again, through consumerization of IOT systems, that um, IOT specific technologies for very specific edge use cases are still embedding common access technologies, common networking technologies, common security protocols, um, common uh, orchestration capabilities for compute as some examples. And so what we are building is the ability for uh, an enterprise architect or an enterprise network architect to define a single network architecture physically that can commingle lots of different, perhaps parallel network architectures into a single common platform and then operate it, even though that it might consume multiple, many parallel types of systems, ultimately operate it as one single entity. Um, that honestly, that's the power of the Aruba architecture is even though we have to physically deploy access points and switches and uh, SD-WAN gateways to create whatever the enterprise network architecture looks like. It's all driven by software and it's all driven by common interfaces that at some point get down to, okay, I can actually connect that kind of strange device because it has enough commonality so that I can plug in this USB adapter into this access point and all of a sudden I've got this connectivity for this very specialized thing, transporting a specialized protocol across an IP network. So it's, um, it, it's really the blend of uh, looking for horizontal opportunities so that we attack the market effectively, but also make sure we don't leave anybody behind in the process just because they've got a specialized need. Yeah, thank you for that clarification. So Aruba is going to participate in the entire value chain that we've sort of laid out here and visualized. Um, what do you think's going on? Maybe we could talk about the, 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 the vendor landscape. Uh, 
you know, the pretenders from the contenders. What are the keys in your view to the product solutions, the, the, the right clarity of vision, uh, maybe some things that haven't been invented yet. How, how do you how do you think about that? Yeah, so um, a lot of lessons learned over the past ten years, I would say. Um, there have been a number of very prominent enterprise technology companies, um, facilities tech, um, or, uh, vertical oriented solutions for healthcare, for industrial settings, and and they've all at one point or another tried to build a platform strategy. They have decided to self-anoint or anoint themselves with, we're going to be the platform for some particular horizontal function inside the enterprise that involves IoT. Because we want to be the centerpiece where all of this data from all these IoT systems concerning this particular environment flows through. And we want to help democratize data access. Um, Unfortunately, most of them still took a very vendor specific point of view about it, even even by layering, you know, standards on top of what they've built, um, even forming industry consortiums, they haven't necessarily achieved critical mass of what we would all like to see, which is full democratization of IoT solution architectures and IoT data access. And uh, I think we're going to see that over the next 10 years. It, it's going to take a while. But I think, um, you know, to, to your question of what are some interesting, uh, interesting products or technologies to be developed, um, I think uh, industries working together, vendors working together, like Microsoft, like Google, like Amazon, like Aruba, HPE, like um, InOcean, which is a, an industry consortium, these places where we come together and decide to achieve the greater good, the great, to, to achieve greater benefits for our enterprise customers and build a platform capabilities using standards, using open source, using consumerized tech, using um, really critical functions in orchestration, configuration management, API architectures, Standard um, standard object models for how uh, how information is communicated. I think that we will be able to democratize uh, IoT data access. I think we'll be able to democratize how IoT systems are deployed and dramatically expand the market opportunity for the benefit of everybody. Yeah, we've certainly seen those types of collaborations before. I'm not sure it's ever been this large. Yeah, maybe the internet is this large, but but that was kind of more government driven than it was you know, sure. vendor driven, which is your lane. Now give us the bumper sticker for why HPE in Aruba. Well, you know, um, HPE is in a really, um, in a really interesting position. We really are enabling the entire edge to cloud architecture, as we've mentioned a few times, and the ability to lay out the foundation of the infrastructure for communications, for compute, for storage, regardless of how an enterprise organization wants to consume it, whether it's all at the edge or all in private data centers or in hybrid architecture, whether they want to control the entire architecture top to bottom, whether they want us to help them deploy and manage the architecture on their behalf with our, with our industry partners, um, ultimately we are giving them a, a, a set of building blocks end to end that will coexist with whatever they've already built, um, help them build a malleable architecture in, uh, going forward in the future, and, and really help them achieve economy of scale. David, very interesting discussion. Thank you so much for your perspectives. Really appreciate you coming on theCUBE. Thank you, thank you so much, Dave. I really appreciate the time and I'm, uh, uh, I'm really excited to be part of Discover. Awesome, and, and thank you for watching this segment of HPE Discover 2021. You're watching theCUBE, this is Dave Vellante. Keep it right there.